Hello, I'm Tom Hathaway. I'm wearing my BA hat, so let's talk business analysis. Business data models are one of the secret things that uh, IT projects absolutely need in order to succeed. In this nugget, we're going to discuss what a business data model is, why it is important, and why the business community has to understand what the data model says. These ideas will help you when you are the one wearing the BA hat. Business data is any information that an organization needs to operate. Every business process within an organization consumes data and creates new data. For instance, the process sell product consumes inventory data, you have fewer items in stock, and adds financial data, you have more money in your register. Data modeling identifies essential base data and defines the context within which your organization uses and maintains the data independent of your information technology or IT architecture. Base data is any data that comes from the environment, meaning it cannot be calculated or otherwise derived. Its corollary is derivable data. For example, your birth date is base data whereas your age is derivable. All the computer needs is a date of birth and today's date to calculate your age. Why should you model business data? Missing base data is one of the most costly errors you can make on IT projects. It's relatively easy to add derivable data if the necessary base data is available. It's also relatively simple to add a missing process if the base data that the process needs is available. Adding base data always impacts a minimum of two separate processes, the process capturing it and the process or processes that consume it. Redundant base data, identical base data stored in different locations, is nearly as bad. If you have customer addresses stored in two separate locations, Keeping both versions current requires extensive discipline or finely tuned automated programs. What happens if they get out of sync? Which version of the address is then correct? Finding data errors late in the project is a major contributor to IT project budget overruns and canceled IT projects. A business data model creates a picture of the base data that your business needs helps you identify missing and redundant base data, establishes a baseline for communication across functional boundaries within your organization, provides a basis for defining business rules, and makes it cheaper, easier, and faster to upgrade your IT solutions. When should you model business data? You should create a model of your business data independent of any IT projects. The business data model is one of the simplest steps to avoiding missing and redundant data before your project starts. At the latest, create the model before you make any IT decisions. It's important to recognize that this model does not depict databases or files, but logical business data entities, which are things someone needs to know something about to do their job. By definition, a data entity is something for which you need to track base data over some time span – hours, days, months, years, etc. What does the business data model do for you? To make this clear, I'm going to use a very simple example. Assume you have a video rental store serving a small city. To keep it simple, we're going to assume that renting videos is all you do. You probably have more than one customer, or you'll not be in business very long. So you need to keep track of data describing each customer, i.e. their name, their address, their email address, etc. That makes customer a likely candidate for a data entity. To start your business data model, we're going to use an oval as the symbol to represent data entities. Write the name of the entity, customer, inside the oval. It is important to recognize that while you have many customers, the data entity customer is singular because it represents a single occurrence of the data entity. It's also noteworthy that a data entity represents a thing. 
and the names of things are always nouns. The specific data you want to know about each occurrence of the entity, name, address, contact info, are its attributes. The attributes you absolutely have to store are base data, as you can calculate any derivable data given appropriate base data. There's no limit on how many attributes you want to store about each entity. That depends on your business processes and what information you need to help you make decisions. On the business data model, write the names of the attributes beside the oval representing the entity they describe, in this case, the customer entity. You'll probably need many different videos, again to stay in business, so you need to track data describing each video, i.e. the title, type, whether it's a DVR, CD, Blu-ray, etc., rental cost, to name a few. Remember, we're keeping this consciously simple. In data modeling speak, we say you have an entity video, which has the attributes title, type, rental cost, and potentially many more. Let's add an oval to represent the video entity and list its attributes beside it. Expanding the example, when a customer comes into your store to rent a video, they are going to take your valuable video home to watch, in exchange for whatever you charge as a rental fee. Since you want to ensure that they return the video at some time in the future, you need to know who the customer is and which video they rented. In the world of data modeling, this is what we call a relationship. A relationship represents an association between two data entities and is only relevant if someone needs to know something about the relationship. The business transaction of renting the video creates a relationship between a customer, an occurrence of the entity customer, and the video, an occurrence of the entity video they rented. A simple line connecting the involved entities represents the relationship between them. As a result, you can look at each customer and identify which videos they have rented. Conversely, you can look at each video and recognize which customer currently has rented it. Where are your business rules? Okay, you have many occurrences of the customer entity and many occurrences of the entity video, and there's a relationship between them. Now we can ask some interesting questions to identify the nature of the relationship. Can a single customer rent many videos? That's actually a business policy question, so you as the business expert are the only person qualified to answer it. In business data modeling speak, it's a simple business rule. On your business data model, it refers to the cardinality of the relationship. Cardinality describes the nature of the relationship the two data entities share. In particular, cardinality refers to whether the relationship is one-to-one, -one, one customer can only rent one video, one-to-many, one customer can rent many videos, but each video can only be rented to a single customer at a time, or many-to-many. -many. One customer can rent many videos, and each video can be rented by many customers at the same time, assuming you have multiple copies of the same video to rent. We're going to represent the cardinality of the relationship by adding tiny, quote, crow's feet, end quote, to the end of the relationship that can be plural. We assume that your business rules allow each customer to rent many videos. The crow's feet point towards the video entity. And each video can be rented by many customers. The crow's feet point toward the customer. This represents the many-to-many -many relationship. Both ends of the relationship line have crow's feet. There's one final aspect of cardinality the business data model depicts and that is whether the relationship is mandatory, there has to be at least one occurrence on that end of the relationship, or optional, there may be no occurrences on that end of the relationship, for each associated entity. In our example, it would be logical to assume that a video might not be associated with a customer if no one is renting it, and a customer might not currently have a video rented. Ergo, both ends of this relationship are optional indicated by putting a zero or O on the end of the relationship line closest to the entity. 
If we were to assume that you are only interested in keeping track of customers who currently have rented a video, the model would have to change. Your business rule then states that the customer entity has to be associated with at least one video entity. This is represented on the diagram by placing a bar on the end of the relationship line closest to the video entity to indicate that there has to be at least one occurrence of that entity for the relationship to exist. The business data model would now represent that a customer must be renting one or more videos to be considered a customer, whereas a video can be rented by any number of customers. Summary Simply put, a business data model shows which business data entities you need to store information about, how those entities are related to each other, and what specific attributes, aka base data, you need to know about each entity. To identify the best IT solution that supports your business, you need to know your data. A business data model should not be a sacred book that only the privileged can read. As a snapshot of your business, it will help you recognize whether a suggested IT solution will work for you.